This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic. In this video, you're going to learn how to find the domain of functions that are given using function notation, such as the four you see right here. So here's the first one. State the domain of f of x equals 5x squared minus 7x. Basically, the question is, what are the values that you can replace x with so that you get a real number? And there's actually no restrictions here. You could put any number in for x and plug it in and you'll get a real number. So in this case, the solution is just all real numbers. The trick to this is to see if there are any restrictions and eliminate those possibilities. If you can't find any restrictions, we'll just put all real numbers. So the solution here is all real numbers. That's not very good writing, sorry. All real numbers. Now, some people write all real numbers like this. It's like two lines with an R. That means all real numbers. And integral notation, you might write from negative infinity to infinity. Those are all perfectly good ways of writing that um, the domain are, are all real numbers. So that's the domain of the function. Okay? Usually you use a uh, kind of script, capital D, to represent the domain. Here's our next one. In g of x, we have a fraction. So here's the trick. If the denominator of a fraction is zero, the fraction is undefined, which means it would not be a real number. So in this particular function, we have to make sure that we don't let x be any number that yields a, a zero in the denominator, because then that would not be a real number when we plug in that value. So the denominator is 3x minus 5. So 3x minus 5 cannot be zero. So since 3x minus 5 can't be zero, that's what we write. 3x minus 5 cannot be zero. So let's solve this to see what x can't be. So if we add 5 to both sides, it's not equal. 3x is not equal to 5, and we divide by 3. This gives us the answer. x cannot be 5 thirds. So now, this assumes that it's all real numbers except 5 thirds. So somebody, sometimes people write that in words, all real numbers except 5 thirds, or except x equals 5 thirds, different ways of writing it. And in fact, in interval notation, you might say, well, it's all real numbers but 5 thirds. Here's a way of writing that. You can go all the way up to 5 thirds, not include it, union from 5 thirds to infinity. So different ways you might see um, the problem written for the domain, okay? So this might be kind of the more formal way of doing it. This is kind of writing it out in words. I'll say that's the domain. And just writing x is not equal to 5 thirds, usually that means all real numbers except that number. All right, here's our next one. State the domain of h of x equals 7 minus 2 radical x plus 4. We don't have a fraction here, but we do have a square root. And when you take the square root of something, we, have, we can't take the square root of a negative number to get a real number. So the square root of a negative number is not real. So we have to make sure that the part under the square root cannot be negative. Because to be a real number, the number under the square root must be greater than or equal to zero. So we're going to take this part under the square root, x plus 4, and make sure that it's greater than or equal to zero. All right, so we want to make sure that we're going to get a real number when we plug a value of x in. So x plus 4 must be greater than or equal to zero. Notice it's okay for it to equals zero because the square root of zero is zero. So if we plugged in a number for x like negative four, we'd have the square root of zero. In fact, here, let's just do it real quickly. What happens when I plug in zero? That's seven minus two times the square root of 
negative 4 plus, oops, I didn't want to say I'm plugging in 0, I'm plugging in negative 4. Plugging in negative 4. That would give you 7 minus 2 squared to 0. Squared to 0 is 0. 7 minus 0 is 7. So yeah, when I plug in negative 4, I do get a real number. All right, so it's okay to be 0 what's underneath the square root. So we need to solve this equation. We just have to make sure what's under the square root is greater than or equal 0. It cannot be a negative number. So if we just subtract 4 from both sides, x must be greater than or equal to 4. So that's our solution. All real numbers where x is greater than or equal to negative 4. Or if you were going to write that in interval notation, you could write negative 4 to infinity. Now that shows that it's all real numbers. And you could do a little quick check. What would happen if I had plugged in a number smaller than negative 4? Like for instance, negative 10. What happens if you plugged in a negative 10 into here? Well, you'd have 7 minus 2 times the square root. What happens when you plug in negative 10? Negative 10 plus 4 is negative 6. This is now not a real number and we are only looking for outputs that are real numbers. So there's an example. That's not going to work. How about if I pick a number bigger than negative 4, like 0? What about when x is 0? You would get 7 minus 2 times, well, if I'm putting 0 for x, that's just the square root of 4. And 7 minus 2 times 2, 7 minus 4 is 3. Sure, our answer would be 3. That's a real number. So when you're done, it's always kind of good to look and see if it makes sense if you just plugged in a solution or something that's not supposed to be a solution. Here's one more. We want to find the domain of this function. Well, we have a fraction again. No problem with a numerator. We don't care what's in the numerator, but we cannot have a zero in the denominator. So again, we know the denominator cannot be equal to 0. x squared minus 3x minus 10 cannot be equal to 0. So what values of x will make it 0? Well, we could do that by factoring. So this will be x minus 5 times x plus 2. That can't be 0. But neither of these numbers can be 0. So x minus 5 can't be 0 and this is different than when you put it's equal to 0, you always write or, but actually can't be either of these numbers. x plus 2 can't be 0 either. So if we solve, we get x cannot equal 5 and x cannot be equal to negative 2. So there's two things that x can't be. So our answer, we could, often you'll just see it as x cannot be 5 or negative 2. We just put both like that. That means we want all the real numbers except 5 and negative 2. You can use, write this in interval notation. It does get a little bit hairy looking, but let me make this a little bit smaller so we have space. Here we go. If you're going to write it in interval notation, we could write, well, all the numbers up to negative 2, but not including it, union, from negative 2 up to 5, union. 5 to infinity. That's how we could write that um, using the interval notation. All right, I'm going to just point out one other thing here. Um, first of all, we could plug in 5 and see what happens into this function and see that it really is undefined. So if you plug in 5, so in other words, what's f of 5? You would put in 5 for x. Notice you'll get a 0 in the nu uh, numerator. And if you put 5 in the denominator, let's see, so you got 5 squared, what's that, 25, minus 3 times 5, that's 15, minus 10. So you do get 0 over 0, which is undefined. So you can see that 5 definitely gives us a problem. And you could do the same thing for negative 2. But I just want to show you something. If you had simplified this fraction first, You'd have x minus 5 in the numerator, x minus 5 times x plus 2 in the denominator. This, after you cancel, would give you 1 over x plus 2. 
Now what happens if I put in 5 into here? Here's the problem here. This is not the same function. If I put 5 into here, this is a new function. g of x, let's say, is 1 over x plus 2 is not the same as x minus 5 over x squared minus 3x minus 10 because the denominators are different. So it's true that in this new function, after you seemingly simplify it, you would get 1 7th by plugging in 5 for x. But what matters is that when you plug that value into the original function, it still has to be defined before it can be simplified at all. So that's just a little nuance to think about. All right, so we're done with um, several examples, finding the domain. Basically, you're looking for numbers um, that make the uh, function uh, yield something that's not a real number. Those are the problem values. So if there are no problem values, usually it's just going to be all real numbers. So what you're looking for is there, are there any restrictions? This is your math gal, Julie Harland. Please visit my website at yourmathgal.com where all of my videos are organized by topic.